Merry Christmas to every one of you. It's our turn to sing some carols together. And we are beginning with our CGS hymn book, taking number 49 to begin with. Hymn number 49, once in Royal David's city, which um, we have um, sung many times already, and we are not tired of um, singing all these carols. You're welcome to this special Christmas Day service. We pray that the joy of Christmas will be yours Amen. and your entire household Amen. and for me too. Yes. Similarly, for our internet audience, we pray that the joy of Christmas will be yours wherever you are. Amen. If you are visiting or living locally, and you like to have a Christmas Day service, we are just starting. Um, we've listened to the um, prelude from our choir and the um, orchestra beginning with um, a clarinet solo and then the choir and this last uh, medley that we've had, a solo. You've not missed much, you can as well join us. We are located on number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA53EP. Join us for the service if you are able to do so. But if not, you can as well just continue to enjoy the service with us online as we sing together some carol beginning with our hymn book number 49, Once in Royal David City. Let's say verses 1, 2, 4, and 6. 1, 2, 
4 and 6. After the introduction. <laughs> Light Supana now makes its rays appear. Amen. Hymn number 36. We have three verses there, and we are taking all the three verses.
have a grand choir, the um, orchestra will hand down their instrument and they will join us as we sing the first Noel, which is not in our hymn book, but which we have um, as a carol to sing together. We will rely entirely on the um, AV to project this for us on time. If there is any failure there, there is no way we're going to sing that correctly since we don't have the weight in our hymn book. We are going to take, we have six verses. We are not singing all the six. We are just going to take the three verses of the first Noel. Verses one, two, and three should be fine for us. Verses one, two, and three, the first Noel. Let's listen to the tune. <laughs> someone here I'm waving hands. It's not for fun. It's for a purpose. So maybe you just follow my hands. 
If my hand says hold, hold. If my hand says stop, stop. That's the job of a director. That's what I'm doing this morning. God bless you. Number 46. Oh, come, all you faithful. Number 46. Let's take again from here three verses. One, two, and the last. Verses one, two, and the last. Sitting down still. We have um, quite to praise God with, song, with this um, Christmas day. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Let's take verses one, two, and the last. Singers, God bless you. Amen. Well, we want to look at one relatively controversial carol, number 37. It has many tunes to it. Some people would like to sing it with traditional. Some people would like to sing it with contemporary. Some people would like to sing it with the tune in between, between traditional and contemporary. Well, we want to take... Um, the in-between. Originally, the chorus of this song is um, Gloria in Excessis Deo, which is a Latin that stands for glory to God in the highest. Amen. So when we get to come and worship, that one that we always mix together, and some of us don't even know where to put which word, um, we are going to just replace, come and worship with um, Gloria in Excessis Deo. Is that okay? Yes. For some that still want to retain the words of the song, you can do so, but you need to make sure that you get it right because um, at times uh, some of us don't get it right. We sing, and then we, don't, we just don't know what else to say. 
all right? Um, but, but, but we have looked into this and we know that it can be, one can sing it correctly without adding worship to the first one and then the last one you add worship. Let's see how that goes and then all of us will learn that today um, together. Brad Godwin, please. that glory and excess the devil. Yes. Let's try come and worship. There are two types to that. Some people like to be singing like um, come, come and what they put their own. It's not there in the book. Come and worship, come and worship. Then they don't know what to say again. Either they want to say worship Christ than you. Then the note will not just correspond to the remaining words. What you need to say is Christ the newborn king. Omit the worship. It is the second time that you add worship. You will see how that will fit in. Shall we try that with verse 2? Now, let's put glow aside now. Let's sing what you see on the notice. Um, come and worship. Let's take verse 2, please. Share. Are used to it, isn't it? Yes. And that's why now we are getting it wrong. Okay, you want me to try because if I, if I then try it and I miss it? <laughs> um, okay. And worship Christ the newborn King. Worship Christ the newborn King. sound like it? Yes. God bless you. Verse 3 now. Now I'm not going to be a soloist again. We are singing together. Verses 3 and the last. Verses 3 and 5. We take that now. Then let some people sing Gloria. Let some people sing Come and Worship. Is that okay? Yes. Whichever one you can sing, let's mix the two together. Alright? Verse 3 now.
here, may he accept our praises and worship. Let's take our last song before we stand up for congregational prayer, which um, will be given by Brother Upe, and that will be number 38. Christian, lift your voice of praises on this memorable day. Sing in gladness. Let your voices sing all over Vale and Dale. Let's say this is one, five, no, one, three, five, six. One, three, five, and six. Hymn number 38, one, three, one, three, five, and six. After the introduction from the orchestra. Best to come. we thank you. Thank you for this memorable day. A wonderful and memorable day. The best celebration of a birthday. The greatest birthday ever celebrated. Lord, we worship you. Glory be to your name. Father, we thank you for the Spirit of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We glorify your name this morning. Amen. We thank you for the name Jesus. Yes. We thank you for the love of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for the friendship of Jesus. Amen. For that which he came to this world to accomplish in our lives and our souls. Lord, thank you for a wonderful day like oh, this. Yes. A day when the whole world obey your word. Oh, yes. That's, oh Lord, thank you for today. Amen. Oh Lord, the Japanese yen is suspended. The English sterling, the, all the stock markets in the world have been suspended. 
because a king is born. Oh, yeah. oh glory be to your yeah. name. Father, we praise you. Amen. Who are we to contest with your wonderful king? Who are we to even line up with who you are? We started very slow. It seems as if we will not pick up. I can feel your spirit. Oh, yeah. Your spirit come in between. Oh Lord, that we can smile because you love us. Oh, yeah. We can smile because it is Christmas. We can appreciate that all of us today we will be going like commotion from head to toe, going to one workplace or the other. But you have suspended all in honor of yourself. Lord, as we gather to worship you, give us the spirit of worship, oh Lord. Give us the right spirit of worship. Put smile in our heart. Let us know that without you, we can do nothing. That in you we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. And we have the right to be in our Father's house. All the insinuation of Satan, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we want to rejoice. Because you have come, you have been born, born in our souls born in our lives. What an emulation. Oh Lord, we praise you. We worship you. Let Satan, let his emissaries, let his works be put to shame today in the name of Jesus. Bless us today as your word will come out. Let us have every cause to say that Jesus indeed is born. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Once again, we say Merry Christmas to everyone, including members and visitors present and all those on the webcast enjoying this our Christmas Day service with us. We pray that the true joy of Christmas and the goodwill extended unto all mankind be unto you Amen. and to your family in Jesus' name. Amen. As already announced, um, for this year we decided to suspend our annual arrangement of outings that the church likes to uh, send out people to homes for the elderly and people like that, as we have already announced. Instead of this outing that we always announce or that we always arrange, we are going to reach inward this year, and that is to the members of the household of faith. So for this year, as we, are, we have already announced, we want you to... Um, well, of course, Christmas is a time when family gets together, and that is okay, but I want to believe it's also a time when you reach out to others. So please, if you can invite um, anyone to join your family, especially not even within the circle of your influence, but people that perhaps you don't even have any rapport with at all, to some extent. Of course, as God's children, we all have rapport together, but all, all of us understand that kind of a thing. You just go to someone, we are coming to your house, or you come to us, and things like that, and the kind of thing people say, how? Oh, where is the connection? And then the connection is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. So that is the kind of thing that we want to do, and I want to believe that we have already arranged for that. Don't ask me where I am going. I'm going somewhere. If you come to my residence, you will not meet me there because I'm going away as well. I'm doing just as we have said and I want to believe that all of us have made arrangement to do that and God is going to really bless us Amen. as we do that. Actually, it's the word of Jesus that says that if we only reach out, he didn't say visit, but he talks about show love or greet only people that greet us. What is the benefit of that? But when you extend that to someone that you, you don't always cross paths, then that has great reward. Yes. And that's the kind of thing that we want to fulfill by the grace of God this um, Christmas um, season. Um, I have checked the um, kitchen, and I noticed that we still have um, more things still available for those who need, who, who, who need them. Um, they're in the kitchen. Please help yourself with um, anything that you need. We have some in the freezer. I opened the freezer. I still see some there. Uh, please help yourself. We have some on the table. We have some under the table. Um, please feel free to help yourself after the service if you need um, anything from what has been provided by um, people in the church as well as by the church in terms of um, just reaching out to anyone who may need anything. Please do that at the end of the service. There will be no meeting tomorrow. 
Um, no prayer meeting tomorrow, Boxing Day, but on Friday we are going to have our last end of the month prayer meeting between the hours of 8 and 11. And make sure that you attend that. God will bless you for that. Amen. Next Sunday, the last Sunday for the year, we're going to have our Sunday school, the last Sunday school for the year at 9.30. We must have announced to you that we are now going back in terms of what lesson we are studying, and that is the second to the last lesson in our current book 12, The Conquest of Jericho. That's what we are studying for um, the last Sunday of the year. What a befitting lesson. Yes. God has conquered 2018 for yeah. us. Thank God for that. The last devotional service will be at 11. The last Y4C, 230. The last revival service is not going to be a revival service is going to be a revival service of, of, of a different kind. It's going to be a special evening. Just to say bye-bye to some extent. When we do our weeknight service, we don't usually have time to do that. We go into a short service and then we go into prayers. But for this last Sunday, the last evening service is going to be a special inspiration evening in which everyone is welcome to join. It's going to be a special night of praises and thanksgiving to God. So please um, make sure you invite people to join us. And that is going to be from 4 p.m. through to um, 6 p.m. Then the watch night service at 10 p.m. on Monday, which is the last day of the year. Do well to invite your family members to be part of that. All children who performed in the children's Christmas program um, their teachers would like to see them before they go today. Those who are around, who perform in the Christmas program, please, um, your teachers would like to see you at the back hall um, after the service. Okay, we're going to listen to the first special, Ding Dong Merrily on High, from the choir, and then we have the Bible reading and the last special before the word of exhortation. God bless you.
Our Bible reading for this Christmas service is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1. We're reading from verse 26 to 33. Luke, chapter 1, from verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. 32. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. Amen. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Amen. Verse 33 and the last. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Amen. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. Outside my heart's 
closed door Oh, cleanse me from sin Then, dear Lord, enter in And dwell there forever Taking our text from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, I'm going to read from verse 46, Luke chapter 1, verse 46 says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Christmas is a special time. Yes. It's a time of surprises. Yes. Actually, I listened to a song that says it's the most wonderful time of the year. The happiest season of all. It's a time of miracle. Yes. Well, um, people call many things miracle these days. I received something from um, one of those things that they send around and this has to do with training that has been given to some little dogs to perform some acts, some actions. And if you look through that kind of a clip, truly you will agree that this is very, very surprising. Yes. How can these little, little, tiny, tiny dogs can perform all of these actions? And many people are saying so many things, and I heard someone shouted from the audience, this is a miracle. Well, it may be a miracle, but there is something more even miraculous. Amen. There is something even greater than that. Yes. And indeed, as they were performing that act, that background music was going on, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I started thinking, that is true, but not because the doors can perform, not because these little dogs can be jumping, but certainly it is the most wonderful time of the year because of what happened. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. All because of Jesus. Yes. Amen. All because God became a man. Yeah. All because heaven looked down in love yes. and sees that you and I were in need of God in our hearts. Amen. It's a time of the year indeed when we want to pray that our soul, our spirit, and our body, we magnify the Lord. Amen. Even as um, Mary did here. This um, passage of the scripture from verse 46 through to verse 55 is often referred to as the Magnificat. The Magnificat of Mary. It's, it's a special time for Mary is a special song of Mary, is a special composition of words of praise that swell from the heart of Mary because of the miracle that God was performing right at that time. This particular passage of the scripture, I remember very well in my primary school days. This Magnificat is what we have to memorize, is what we have to come during morning assembly to read, that time I had no clue what it all meant. All that we just know when we were young, perhaps I've said this many times, Christmas time, especially for poor family like my family, is the only time when you eat rice. It's the only time that you have new cloth. And we like to wear it and then all around the compound will be showing off. Just as little boys, my, my nice cloth, my, my new cloth. And then, of course, you like to eat rice and chicken. That's how we understood Christmas to be yes. as young people. After Christmas and the New Year, I can't remember when we would cook, cook rice. Why? For what purpose? We're talking of poor people here. Maybe for some of you, you eat rice every time. I didn't grow up like that. It has to be local food. 
So that's the way we remember Christmas as a special time. But Christmas is not about food. No. Oh. Even though, yes, we, we, we eat special meal, I want to believe that. Some of us, um, perhaps we have our roast now in our oven, and we're looking at the time, perhaps, when will this service be over? And then the potato and every other thing to come out, and then we eat, which we don't eat normally. And there's nothing wrong in that. But Christmas is greater than that. Yes. Christmas is more than that. Yes. Christmas is a time of miracle. Yes. And I want to pray that God of heaven will give you and I that miracle. Yes. The word of Mary, they were expressions of joy and praise with God alone as the object of that praise, with God alone at the center of that joy. Similarly, that kind of song was uh, um, given by um, Anna when God performed a miracle in her life too. And this kind of song is something that worth looking into. Verse 48 says, For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Amen. God can do that for you and I. Amen. Of course, we don't worth it. Of course, we are nothing. But when God does it, that is what we mean by miracle. He can regard our low estate and raise us up. Verse 49 says, For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. There is nothing to claim for ourselves. There is nothing to claim for ourselves, but he that is mighty. God is mighty. He is the only one that does mighty things. He will do that for you. He will do that for me this Christmas in Jesus' name. What an undeserved mercy, which is now offered unto all. If you read the remaining part of that Magnificat, you will see that he's just trying to say that salvation is now free to the humble, to the unrecognized, to the hungry, to the poor. Anyone and everyone can now be filled and have uh, the enjoyment of these good tidings. And I want to pray that may God help us to have that experience today, Amen. especially the miracle of Christmas. Before this time, it was darkness. History, if that history is correct, tells us that between the Old and the New Testament was about 400 years of darkness. No vision, nothing was going on. And in the middle of that darkness, God looked down from heaven. God started to perform. He sent angel to two old couple, one couple rather, sorry, one couple, um, Zechariah and Elizabeth. They were old. Perhaps they've given up. Actually, uh, uh, Elizabeth was given a name, the barren. If you look at chapter 1, verse 36, it talks about, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called Barren. That was her name, Barren. And they were old. But what did um, Zechariah, what did he do? He continued to serve God. He continued to worship God. I'm not worshiping God because of anything outward. I'm not worshiping God because of anything that is a gift from God to me. I'm worshiping God because I love the Lord. I'm worshiping God because I want to serve him. I'm worshiping God because he deserves my praise. That's what Zechariah was doing. He continued to perform his job as a priest, just normally as we are doing today. We have come into the house of the Lord today as we normally do. You never know. That's the way I always think. You never know the visitation of the Lord that can happen in his temple. Zechariah was just performing his normal duty according to the custom of the priest's office, doing what he was able to do, burning incense, went into the um, um, temple of the Lord in verse 9 of uh, the chapter 1 of the book of Luke, and there appeared unto him in verse 11 an angel of the Lord, which he has not seen before, verse 11, uh, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled, of course, he was afraid, of course, and the angel said unto him, verse 13, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. Amen. 
on this day. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our prayer will be heard. Amen. He came just as ordinary man to worship God. We are normally worship God. Nothing. If I have been praying for something, God has not done it. I keep worshiping God. Yeah. I keep praising God. Yeah. I keep serving God. Yeah. One day, Amen. the answer will come. Yeah. The Lord has answered your yeah. prayer. Yeah. What a miracle. Yeah. He was there expecting and he doubted of course which may be natural to man when you say my wife will conceive my wife has already been given a label in the, in the compound when everybody is talking of that the barren the barren they are referring to Lizzie my wife so now you are saying something like that will happen he doubted and of course he was rebuked but the father God has said it yeah it must come to pass. Amen. Because God is mighty. Yes. Because he does mighty things. Yes. He performs miracles. Yes. He became dumb, of course, and then he got home and passed when he, uh, honey, he could not even talk. But he believed God. Because John the Baptist was not conceived of the Holy Ghost. He was dumb, but of course he believed God. That's why Lizzie conceived. Have you given thought to that? He believed God. And God looked down from heaven that you believe. And God honored that. And Lizzie conceived. I don't know what you have been waiting for. Yours may not be the case of being called barren. Yours may not be the case of waiting to get married or to have children, or to have a good job, or to have a perfect health, whatever yours is, you know the angel of God today Amen. can tell you, Amen. he can tell me yes. that all that your request Amen. is answered. Amen. And it shall be so Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will have Christmas Day 2018 Amen. as a memorable Amen. day. As a wonderful day. Amen. As a great day. Amen. The whole thing started just like that. Conceived. And perhaps still wondering what's going to happen. And the same angel, Amen. by the name Gabriel, Amen. God sent the same angel. Amen. The passage that we have read from verse 26. And in the sixth month, God is the one orchestrating all this. Amen. God is the one planning all this. After six months, then sent the same angel to um, um, the city of Galilee named Nazareth, a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph. By this word of uh, exposed here, we take that to mean something like um, in courtship. Yeah. They have not married. In courtship. And then the angel then made the announcement, um, Hail thou that are highly favored, the, the Lord is with thee. Amen. Blessed are thou among women. Amen. Uh, God made the choice. Yes. Yes. God can choose you. Amen. God can choose me. Yes. Um, you know, we can choose to be chosen. Yes. Right. Choose to be chosen. Amen. I believe Mary chose to be chosen Amen. by God. Amen. God will look down from heaven. Yeah. Not because others were bad. Not because other were, well, this is the only one, I don't know, but I want to believe there may be more, but God needed one. Yeah. And God looked down. I'm going to choose this. Amen. Because I know the way she will handle it. Amen. And then the message got to Mary, and then she was troubled as well. Fear not, Mary, verse 30, for thou art found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth his son, and shall call his name Jesus. Amen. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm yet unmarried. It shall be great. Then the characteristics of the um, uh, miracle child uh, being given here shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Amen. His kingdom shall be no end. Amen. And Mary said, verse 34, How shall this be? Since I know not a man. Is that not one what some of us may be thinking perhaps about our situations. 
Is that not true? How can it be? Can that happen? How can that happen? How will you do that? With God, yeah. all things, yeah. everything yeah. is possible. Yeah. Be telling yourself down deep in your heart, I don't know what you are going through. I'm going through mine. We are all going through ours. But you can be uh, uh, encouraging yourself with the word of the Bible that with God. This situation, how can it settle? How can I get over it? How can it be like yesterday for me, this thing that I'm facing with God? Amen. And the answer came, verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost Amen. shall come upon thee, Amen. and the power of the highest Amen. shall overshadow thee. Amen. Therefore also that holy thing we shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. God will do it. Yes. That's what I believe. Yes. Mary was being admonished about here. Yeah, don't worry. Don't figure it out. God is going to do it. Yes. God is going to do it. Yes. You wonder. After all the shepherd, they came. The wise men, they came. And then she got this baby that she didn't know any man. You wonder why the Bible says that when Mary saw all these things, she was pondering. She was pondering. How would, what, 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 how would all these things, where will it end? This is something that has never happened before. Something that has never happened before can happen to me today. Can happen to you today. It's not a question of saying that I've chosen a day. God is the one who is choosing that day. Yes. And there is no reason why God should not choose that day for you and I today Amen. to do something Amen. that will be so miraculous, yes. something that will be so spectacular yes. that we too will not even know. How did that happen? May God do that for us today. Amen. May that be our testimony. Amen. Well, she didn't argue. She resigned. Then it comes, the word of God comes by saying that, well, be it unto you, verse 37, 38, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me, according to thy word. Amen. And the angel departed from him, be it unto you, Amen. be it unto me, Amen. according to the word of the Lord. Amen. According to the promise of the Lord, Amen. according to all that the Lord has promised you, has promised me, yes. this is a time of fulfillment. Yes. God will fulfill that yes. in your life and in my life. Yes. Not long after that, things started to happen. When Mary visited the aged cousin Liz, now pregnant, if you look at verse um, 30, 30 39 and 40, verse 39. Mary arose in those days, went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. Then something started to happen. And it came to pass, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe lived in her womb, womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. The, the, whatever they call it, inside the womb, of these two ladies started to communicate. Started to get connected. Heaven was witnessing to it. Something miraculous is going on here. Something that has never happened before. Old cousin that no one was expecting to be pregnant, a married lady coming together, and the seed, the special uh, baby that God put in them, in terms of Mary from Holy Ghost, in terms of um, Lizzie, Elizabeth from himself, herself and the husband, they started communicating yeah. with the Spirit of God. Yeah. And it, 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 she felt it. Yeah. Something is going on here. Yes. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded, verse 44, in my eyes, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Amen. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance Amen. of those things Amen. which were told are from the Lord. Amen. You see, we, I'm just trying to trace what led to the Magnificat. 
You can just imagine. Now from that verse 46. Hallelujah. When Mary busted Amen. into, wow, wow. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Amen. My spirit Amen. has rejoiced in God my Savior. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Something great. Something wonderful. Amen. Something fabulous is happening. Amen. The Savior of the whole world is born. Amen. Joy Amen. to the world. Yes. But do you really have that joy in your heart? Because there is no point. Irrespective of the size of your techie. We do joke with things like that. I have said that to some people, jokingly. Is it um, 25 kg? Or is it 15 kg? Um, I know the way they buy turkey. I bought before in the past. I didn't buy any this year. But then is it 5 kg? It doesn't matter the size of your turkey. It doesn't matter all the things that you are putting together. If the joy of Christmas is not in your heart, all those things will be a makeshift joy. It's something that we just eat and you will forget. But if you have the joy of Christmas and you cannot even afford turkey, you cannot even afford Brussels sprout and all the gravy and all what none, you will be more joyful than people that even have 50 kg turkey. You will be more joyful than people that this table is just spread with everything. Which one do you want? Joy of heaven? Yes. Joy of Christmas yes. or just the food and drinks? That's why, of course, some people say they don't want to celebrate Christmas because of the commercial nature of it. It doesn't matter. We, we, we don't need to join that. We don't need to join the commercial nature of it because we should know the meaning of Christmas. Yeah. And no wonder Mary was overwhelmed, filled with joy and praise. Christmas is a time of miracles, indeed, free salvation, true joy, Special visitation, yes. when long standing problems are resolved, yes. when all impossibilities can become possible yes. with God. What a season! May this season not just fly over you, yes. may it not fly over me. Yes. It's a time of celebration, fellowship, gift. The Christmas day can be a day of your miracle. Yes. More importantly, it can be a day when you will accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Amen. When you will check, do I have Jesus born in my heart? Do I really have Jesus or am I just bearing the name Christian, the label brother, the label sister? But today, you can have a great transformation. Amen. All the confusion. Because when Jesus was born, as it was said, all the confusion of everyone even those people that were looking, pregnant, with a baby, uh, not married, you can just imagine. Just imagine what Mary went through. But in the end, when Jesus started to perform, in the end, when God started to act, all those people, I don't know, maybe they will have gone to Mary, I'm very sorry. I said that you are a bad girl. They are just calling you a virgin by the time you got married. You are not a virgin. There is nothing we didn't say about you. But now I can see yeah. that this is true. This is not an ordinary child. This is a wonderful child. Is Jesus not wonderful? Yes. Is he not still doing wonderful things? Yes. He was indeed conceived of the Holy Ghost. If people are telling you today that there is nothing like that, don't believe them. If you can believe in the salvation of your soul, if you can believe the power in the blood of Jesus to transform your life, you shouldn't doubt the fact that Mary was a virgin when she conceived. And it's a miracle. Yes. And we believe that. Yes. And it happened because with God, all things are possible. We want to celebrate Christmas with Jesus in our heart. If you want real joy, if you want to magnify the Lord with your heart, that opportunity is available. Don't just rush home. Be sure you get a special gift of Christmas from God. Be sure there is a witness in your heart that you have got your miracle. Be sure that something, give a nudge on the shoulder of your spirit that your prayer is answered before you go home and enjoy 
uh, continue the enjoyment of Christmas. We want to fall down on our knees. We want to thank God for Jesus. We want to thank God for the miracle that he performed in bringing him. And we want to thank him for the miracle that he will perform even in our life. And then when they say Merry Christmas, the Merry will come from our heart, not just on our face. I'm inviting you to come to the altar and come and pray and ask Jesus to be born in your heart. Ask Jesus to give you joy of Christmas. Ask Jesus for the miracle of Christmas, which is ready to perform in the life of anyone and everyone that asks him. God bless you as you sing to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.